was going through some energy.gov PDFs today and I came across the Savannah River Operations Office. How they're discussing their surplus of plutonium and they want to do an environmental impact statement. You can see their plan. They want to send it to WIP. But WIP is not operational. The nuclear fire that they had over there at the waste isolation pilot plant in February of 2014 on Valentine's night. So they had blamed that on kitty litter and then they said it was just like a salt fire that came in contact with something hot. But we know that there was radioactive barrels down there exploded. They don't know how many. So this whole farce about sending all these excessive plutonium in our country to whip. And that was the only facility of its kind in the United States. They're doing all these cold testing where they're simulating that they're putting in nuclear waste. But it's just a simulation. They're going to try to do it again. They're going to try to put more waste down there. I'm sure they've been digging a lot more new holes. Surplus plutonium. Supplemental Environmental Impact Statement The Department of Energy National Nuclear Security Administration issued a regular decision for the 2015 Final Surplus Plutonium Disposition Supplemental Environmental Impact Statement. The final SEIS does not identify a preferred alternative. Once a preferred alternative is identified, and then here we go, the U.S. Department of Energy, National Nuclear Security Administration announced its preferred alternative for the disposition of certain quantities of surplus plutonium. Among the potential actions considered is the final supplemental analyze the potential environmental impacts of 13.1 metric tons of surplus plutonium. Fortune path is not assigned, including 7.1 metric tons of plutonium from pits that were declared excess to national defense needs, and 6 metric tons of surplus non-pit plutonium. With regard to the 6 metric tons of surplus non-pit plutonium, the DOE's preferred alternative is to prepare this plutonium for eventual disposal at the waste isolation pilot plant in Carlsbad, New Mexico, a geologic repository for disposal of transuranic waste TRU, generated by atomic energy defense activities. Kitty litter! iPhone chargers! So they said it was organic K litter. So these are the new updates at WIP. They're getting prepared to take in this 13.1 metric tons of plutonium. As you can see, they've been uh, busy the last few months. Interim ventilation system tie-in completed. Anniversary of fire radiological events mark major progress at WIP. Ooh. Respiratory protection requirements reduced in parts of WIP underground. They couldn't reuse any of the old stuff they had in there. Forget about it. That stuff is radioactive and they can't use it. So this is all new stuff being built. This is probably a whole new underground facility. That would be my guess. There's been a shit ton of money just went in this the last couple of years. The Department of Energy Waste Isolation Pilot Plant, WIP, reached a major milestone last week that cleared the way for the start of cold operations at the facility. Implementation of Document Safety Analysis, Revision 5, which defines the safety perimeters under which WIP operates, was declared complete on May 29, following several weeks of intense work by the federal and contractor workforce. Cold Operations, the phase of WIP's restart, that involves conducting facility operations with simulated waste. 
containers got underway on June 1st, beginning an eight-week process to demonstrate the adequacy of procedures. Many of these procedures have not been used for more than two years because of the February 2014 events that closed WIP. That, you know, they blamed it on kidney litter, then they said it was a truck fire. And we realized they couldn't go down there anymore. So if it was just a truck fire, how come they still can't go into most parts of the facility? And they're just using a couple caverns and what we think spent a ton load of money to build a new facility next door. The purpose of the core operations is to establish worker proficiency prior to the beginning of formal operation readiness reviews, the ORRs. These are exciting times for us at WIP, said Todd Schrader, manager of the DOE's Carlbad field office. After more than two years of recovering the facility, we are now beginning the formalized process to restart WIP. The next few months will be extremely busy but also they'll be very rewarding for our workforce. Yeah, these hot particles are very rewarding. I want to thank every employee for their hard work and I also want to thank our host communities, Carl, Bad, and Hobbs for their continued support through the recovery process. The cold operation plan uses a grade approach that begins with top table notch practical exercises, procedures to field walk down of work activities and follows with slow disciplined field implementation using thoroughly vetted procedures. The process will be complete after employees demonstrate proficiency in their respective work areas, while at the same time responding to random interruptions, abnormal conditions, and an occasional emergency challenge that exercises this emergency response organization. These activities are designed to ensure the staff and procedures are well integrated. Cold operations will also confirm equipment performance, confirm the readiness of procedures, and demonstrate the performance and knowledge of employees representing waste handling, maintenance, underground services, work planning, high-grade lunches, and industrial hygiene, safety, engineering, and radiological controls and the interim ventilation system will also be operated and further evaluated with the scope of cold operations when operational IVS is expected to increase airflow into the WIP underground by approximately 54,000 cubic feet per minute. Once cold operations are complete, the contractor will perform a management self-assessment which will be followed by operational readiness review teams to be assembled by both the contractor and the Carlsbad field office. Once the contractor and DOE have completed their respective ORRs, resolution of any pre-star findings are completed and regulatory reviews and approvals have been received from the New Mexico Environment Department, DOE can give final approval for commencement of waste and placement at WIP. The next WIP Town Hall meeting is was scheduled today, and the City of Carlsbad and the DOE will co-host a Town Hall meeting to provide updates on WIP's recovery and restart. Going to try to recover like Fukushima, including more detailed information on the DSA. Here's some frequently asked questions from the WIP site. What caused the fire and the radiation release events? The Federal Accident Investigation Board who reviewed the underground salt hall truck fire at WIP attributed the cause of the fire to buildup of combustible fluids on the truck that came into contact with hot surfaces. So combustible fluids, what do they mean? Like gas? Okay, now the Accident Investigation Board initial investigation to the February 14, Happy Valentine, radiological event focused on the reaction to the reactive material release including related exposure to above ground workers and the response action. After the source of the radiological event is determined, the Accident Investigation Board will release a supplement report focused on the direct cause of release and the workers protection measures in the underground facility. The report stated that the direct cause of release was the breach of at least one transuranic waste container in the underground facility. 
So you see how they say, well, it's at least one container. That's one way to say it's only one. The underground facility, which resulted in airborne radioactivity escaping to the environment downstream and was picked up in particular air filters. The board identified the root cause and failure to fully understand, characterize, and control the radiological hazard among managements at WIP. What is being done to prevent a reoccurrence of these events? Well, apparently it wants to send more waste there, <laughs> so they're not trying to prevent a reoccurrence. <laughs> Okay, here's what they say. As a result of these events, the WIP repository is not accepting any waste shipments at this time. WIP is developing a recovery plan. They want to safely return back to full operations. Okay. Highly unlikely you can consider it safe to be at full operations where they were at pre-WIP. Where we are at post-WIP. The Accident Investigation Board reports identified a number of judgments and needs, and the department is currently developing formal corrective action plans. WIP, with the assistance of nuclear experts from around the country, is identifying all our hazards associated with oper operations and implementing controls to prevent the recurrence of recent events. Yeah, How long will WIP be closed to waste shipments when will WIP reopen? Until the source of February 14 event is isolated and mitigated. So it's not isolated and it's not mitigated. How about that? It is premature to say when shipments can resume. WIP will reopen only when it's safe to do so. The Department of is committed to planning and implementing the required recovery actions and corrective actions to enable a resumption of operations as quickly as it can safely be achieved. Site safety basic documents which require us to identify and mitigate all hazards associated with WIP operations also are being evaluated and revised. It sounds to me like they just being really cocky. And as you know, it's really hard to get a pool in another area for something like this. Is WIP designing a new ventilation system? A new ventilation system is being designed for WIP's long term operation. WIP is also implementing interim ventilation system modifications to support recovery activities. How much will it cost for the DOE to recover from these two events? It is premature to estimate the total cost for recovering and restart disposal operations at WIP until the DOE determines the source of the radiological release and completes detailed planning. So get this, it's two years and they still haven't identified the source of the radiological release? <laughs> oh lord. Pre-start activities are continuing at the waste isolation pilot plant. 
as employees verify and validate operation procedures in preparation for resuming transuranic waste and placement operations at WIP. On June 1st, WIP workers began the phase of pre-start activities referred to as cold operations. Cold operations includes verifying adequacy of procedures and equipment operability and allows operators to regain proficiency with both. These activities are all conducted in a controlled environment using simulated waste containers. Simulation It's not the real deal, it's a simulation. The daily operation of evolution start with the basic tasks and increase in complexity until the entire procedure or process has been completed. The idea is to implement and practice all procedures and ensure that they can easily be understood and accurately followed as written. Waste handling personnel are working through all the procedures performing pre-operational checks on equipment and have begun practice loading and unloading of the True Pack 2 shipping casts. Cold operation is expected to last through the end of July or until all activities can be performed safely and efficiently. They're doing personal reviews. WIP Red Team wins Northern Regional Mine Rescue Competition. The WIP Red Team Mine Rescue took top honors last week as a Northern Regional Mine Rescue Contest in New York. The WIP Red Team outdoored eight other teams from the region to win first place overall in the competition. WIP's Red Team took first place in the first aid competition. Radioactive first aid competition, huh? First aid radioactive competition. We're very proud of our mine rescue team. These men and women put in countless hours training to perfect their skills so they are hopefully ever, never have to be used. Federal law requires every operating mine in the United States to have access to two mine rescue teams. Mine rescuers are highly trained specialists with life saving skills they hope they never have to use. Carswell is to lead the National TRUE program. TRUE. Senior Nuclear Safety Specialist Jeff Carswell was recently appointed as the Acting National Transuranic Program Recovery Manager. Jeff will be responsible for coordinating all the activities of the National TRUE program, quality assurances, and other calls bad field office and contract organizations responsible for ensuring we are able to ship and receive Nuclear waste once WIP reopens, said Carl's Bad Field Office Manager Tosh Rader. I am pleased that Jeff has accepted the position and I look forward to his help in moving the NTP program forward, which is called the Transuranic Program Recovery. True. True killer right here. Carswell recently completed the WIP document safety analysis process that established the safety envelope for all operations at WIP and outlines waste acceptance criteria.